Welcome everyone to kind of a little after hours Studio 11 LA kind of chit chat here on the set. I've got a guest here with us today. Blair Benoit is a journalism student and she has some questions for me about journalism. So uh, welcome Blair. Thank you. Thank you, you watched so much. the newscast. What'd you think? I loved it. It was amazing. Um, definitely honored and awestruck by your ability to ad lib and take things out of the rundown and move on with the segment. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Well, you were asking me uh, the segments here on the couches with the guests were those scripted or were those ad lib. Those are the interview segments. And yeah, that's all conversation like we're having now. So journalism and newscasts are not just always scripted things like you mm -hmm. see like 10 p.m is scripted more, but the 5 p.m. show we do has the guests, which allows for the chit chat, which I love. <laughs> I, love. I think that's great too, and um, definitely adds a fun element to the show. I, I was just wondering, how do you keep up with it all? You have your in-ear, you have production, the control room telling you things, and then you're trying to keep up with the conversation mm -hmm. and make sure you're listening so that you have questions to follow up with them about, and then also pay attention to the segment after that. That's a great question, and I tell you, I've been doing these five o'clock show only a couple, of, well, several months now with Jeff Michael, my co-anchor, and it's such a different skill set than, say, mm -hmm. anchoring the 10 p.m. newscast, and I find I'm more exhausted because there's a lot more mental energy going into mm -hmm. this. Okay, today you watched the show, we had breaking news that we cut to twice. Right. We had three different guests. One was very serious, of a serious nature. Uh, one was kind of entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot to talk about, and then one was a product uh, showing, so we right. had to learn that. Dimensions. It's a lot of fun for me, but you're brushing up, you're studying a lot, because we come in at about 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock, and we're on the air at 5. So it's a lot of studying quickly. It's processing information very quickly. And yes, they talk to us in our ear a little bit, not a okay. lot. Like let's say if Jeff's reading something, mm -hmm. they'll talk to me and say, hit that breaking news. Okay. If I'm reading, they'll talk to him. They don't talk a lot. It's not a big conversation in your ear, but they're giving you snips of information so you can then get on the air with it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, um, so I'm, I'm guessing over time you're able to kind of craft that skill and that talent. I'm sure yeah. when you were a rookie journalist, it mm -hmm. didn't come as easy. Right, and let me just point out that Blair is a student of communication at USC getting her master's <laughs> degree. Hello, master's degree. Thank you. But really with this job, it is learning on the job. And mm -hmm. what we do, at least back in the day, is we went to smaller markets. I started in market 197. Okay. There were like only 212 markets then, so one of the smallest of markets. And you wanna make all your mistakes there. Right. You wanna practice your live shots, practice your breaking news, practice scripts, practice when tape doesn't roll, practice when a guest doesn't show, practice when there's mistakes. Because you will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So you wanna get a lot of those bugs ironed out before you get to a big market like LA, which is a number two market in the country. Right, and all eyeballs are watching. That's right. So in terms of mistakes, are there any that you would like to share that mm -hmm. you made or almost made um, that me and other aspiring journalists could learn from? One thing I do tell young people is to keep in mind that this is a career, it is mm -hmm. also a job, but you don't want your job to be just your whole life. Right. And I find a lot of women journalists will get so engrossed in the career, I am one of them, <laughs> that you maybe forget to get married, forget mm -hmm. to have children, and if that matters to you, you might want to think about the balance of career and family because I know a lot of women journalists who then go on to adopt children mm. or go on to fertility treatments because they waited so late while they were living life with this extravagant fun career that you almost forget that there is a window on that mm -hmm. for having children for example and I do tell that to all young people that are in this business keep in mind there is that window on fertility for example think about that where do you want to be when you're 50 or 60? Do you want to be a mother? Do you want to have children? Do you want just to be, you know, career, career, career? Think about those things. Didn't you do a special? Um, I did. Fertility after 40 or something I did. like that? Okay, yeah. I did do a special fertility after 40. Uh, fertility over 40 was the exact okay. title in case you want to look it up on our website. Uh, we won a Gracie Award. Went to New York to get yes. that award because we found it's a really big issue and we had three of our news anchors who all had had fertility treatments talk wow. about the journey one ended up having a baby and yeah. two of us did not because yeah. it didn't take. Hmm. So it is an issue we talk about that. That window for fertility as you get closer to 40, very hard to have a baby on your own. And I think that's really um, a great lesson and a great thing to discuss, especially amongst women because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us feel like we can't have it all. We can't have, you know, the husband and the family and the amazing career. And um, I feel like a lot, especially even my age, feel like they kind mm -hmm. of have to 
choose um, at a young age or, or, you know, focus on one first and then hope that the other one comes late, later. I think what is the definition of having it all? And you have to decide that for yourself. Um, I think that balance is very important. Mm -hmm. Balance is important. And uh, having it all, life is hard for everybody. Life is a lot of work for everybody, no matter what you're doing, no matter what career, your career is. Um, I don't know if I look to have it all anymore, because <laughs> as my mentor told me once, honey, you're missing things every day. <laughs> so I never feel you have it all. Uh -huh. It's what kind of life do you want, and where do you want that life to be when you're 40, 50, 60 and on? And in terms of mentors, who are some of your mentors? I know that you mentioned that um, Emily Card has been instrumental in your Did career. Did I tell you that? I read it, actually. You read that? Gosh, I don't know where <laughs> I put that. Okay. And um, I just wanted to know, uh, yeah, who are, have been some of your other mentors and how do they help you get to where you are today? Well, since you did your homework, <laughs> uh, let me just say, Emily Card is a woman that I met when I was covering a, uh, an election. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of in the wings there and she started chatting with me. And I was a rookie journalist here in Los Angeles and she kind of took me under her wing. She uh, is a woman who had run for Congress. Mm -hmm. She was on the board of Women in Film. She um, had written seven books on women's finance. Wow. And here's why I bring up Emily Card as a mentor. She taught me things like saving money. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to spend when you get income. The TV, mm -hmm. the house, the car, whatever. She really taught me how to save for the future how to plan for retirement, so I credit her with that. She's been a stabilizing factor in my life. She's been that person who's kind of been there, done that. And I tell young people, you want mentors, you want people who you can call, you want people who've been there that can say, you know what, think about this, or calm down about that, or study more on this. Right. She really would stress uh, for me to read more, to be more politically aware, to study more. That's amazing, I feel like that's uh, kind of a lot of information that women don't normally get. And I know it kind of sounds crazy, but, um, I just in a job transition I made mm -hmm. earlier this year, uh, I was talking to someone and she actually came to me and she was like, you know, if you need any assistance when it comes down, down to negotiations, please feel free to contact me. And you do. And you do. I did. And Good. it worked out perfectly, actually. So um, I think that's really important just kind of as women to keep that in mind. Um, I think for anybody, men, women, because my family had certain skills, but they had other areas where they not weren't that skilled. For uh -huh. example, my family wasn't into finance that much and didn't stress a lot of the finance tools mm -hmm. like this woman has taught me about finance, saving, buying a house, investing, or whatever, things to prepare for a future because as women, I know that I'm not going to be on the air forever and I want to be able to, you know, uh, pay the bills right. down the road. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm sure you also want to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And in terms of that, what advice do you have when it comes to keeping that balance, keeping that work-life mm -hmm. balance, um, and keeping yourself sane at the end of the day? I do have another mentor, and one of her great tips was the word no. Mm -hmm. The word no. And I found earlier on I had a hard time saying no. Every community event that called and wanted me to come out, which was great. I wanted to be at all of them. You're like, but, I'm there. <laughs> but the price you pay is that you're exhausted. Right. Or you miss out on activities or birthdays or family events mm. or things with friends because you've committed. I had a real problem where I overcommitted. In fact, I, I, I might even do that a little bit today. You know, <laughs> uh, I had an event today where we had a big stair climb. So I came to work mm -hmm. a little bit exhausted because I kind of overbooked and I was out the door very early. So no is a big word because yeah. you want to protect your health. You want to protect your um, well-being, your mental health. Um, the things that you're saying yes to, what are you missing out on because you didn't do your homework for the news or you didn't uh, spend time with your family mm -hmm. or you don't have any time for friends. Mm -hmm. So that's how you balance it. You look at what you want and you have to say no in some areas to have that. And in terms of managing the things that you do, because I know you're a big philanthropist, you, mm -hmm. have, you do a lot with Wednesday's Child mm -hmm. and adoption and everything. You also um, mentor youth interested in music, I believe. <laughs> I, well, I mentor youth with their passion. I okay. try to find what their passion is and help them achieve that. Okay, mm -hmm. so how would you categorize your time management skills, your project man management skills um, that you know enable you to handle all of that? I think that I am blessed to be able to do all that because I don't have children. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying my life is better than somebody else's. I'm saying I don't have 
I'm not running a kid to soccer on yeah. Saturday morning so I can do a charity event. So I want people to know that I don't feel like my life is better than others. I just feel like because of that situation, I have the time to do the events outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. That's amazing. Um, this has just really been such a great opportunity, and I'm and I'm really just so thankful. And um, you know, I'm very familiar with your career. <laughs> I've watched you since I was a little girl. That um, makes me feel a little old. I'm just <laughs> saying. Um, you know, you've been in the business so long, over 20 years. You've won 16 Emmys. Tell me, it, what's next for you? Is there are there any goals? career-wise, life-wise, that you have yet to accomplish? Well, I think the boss would like it if I said <laughs> my career goal is right here. Um, because we're doing the 5 o'clock show, that's been a new kind of challenge for me, mm -hmm. a new opportunity. Like I said, it's not just the reading of scripted material. It's not just straight reporting. It's a lot more entertainment than I have ever done in mm -hmm. my life. Um, so to me, it's kind of getting on the air every day about making mistakes, being fairly studied, fairly well studied mm -hmm. so I can do a good job every day. Right now, my plate is full with that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of time, I know I've got to get my crew on a dinner break, so <laughs> no how about worries. one more question? Um, God, I, I honestly feel like you've probably answered everything that I came here wondering and thinking, and um, you talked about you know how you handle everything with with while you're on air um, with regards to the 5 p.m. newscast. And that was crazy. I also was in this, the control room. It was seeing, a busy day. Oh my God, yeah. it was so frantic. Um, <laughs> and, um, but yeah, this has been such an amazing opportunity. Well, t tell them what you told me when we met. Okay, so don't laugh. I'm but not laughing. When I was a little girl, um, I used to run around the house telling my parents that I, when I grew up, I was going to replace Christine Devine <laughs> on the Fox 11, 10 o'clock news, um, and I don't want to replace you. No, what's funny, though, <laughs> is because I had that charity event where we did the stair climb, we climbed the tallest building on the West, which means my, my legs were exhausted, <laughs> I was exhausted. I said, of all days for you to replace me, this would be the day. So Blair Benoit, thank you for coming on. Thank so you nice to meet so you. Much. And you know what? I applaud her for reaching out to interview somebody that you you the job that you want mm -hmm. so you're learning and i really applaud that um, enthusiasm and courage thank to show you. up it's been a pleasure thank you all right that's it crew dinner break <laughs> thanks everybody